can determine from a function. I'm going to go through one more example, and we're going to identify all of those same things. Okay, so again, we start out, here's a new function, it's, it's a different graph. Find the domain, so again, domain is the x value, so what's the furthest we get to the left, and what's the furthest we get to the right? Well, to the left, we start at negative 5, and to the right, we end at 6. Now, if we had arrows here, our domain would be from negative infinity to positive infinity, but we don't. We have points where it stops. So our domain is just going to be where what's the furthest we get to the left and furthest to the right. And again, I'm writing this in interval notation. So our x values range from negative 5 to positive 6. Okay, that's not the point, negative 5, 6. It's the interval from negative 5 to 6. Find the range of the function. So what's our biggest y value or what's the highest our graph gets? And what's our lowest y value or what's the lowest? Okay. So it looks like that's our low and our high. Our lowest looks like it's at negative 3 for our y value. And our highest is at positive 3 for our y value. So our range is from negative 3 to positive 3. Go ahead and put that in. Again, this is in interval notation, the range from negative 3 to 3, including those points. What's the maximum for the function? So what's the highest y value we get? The highest y value is here. That's our highest point, And the y value at that point is 3. So our maximum is 3. What is the minimum? What's the lowest y value we have on our graph? That would be our lowest point, And our y value at that point is negative 3. So our minimum is at negative 3. Find the y-intercept for the function. Okay, so again, y-intercepts are any points where the graph crosses the y-axis. This is the only point where it crosses the y-axis, and that is the point 0, negative 2. So again, I'm going to write this down. This is the actual point, the point 0, negative 2. Find the x-intercept. Okay, x-intercepts are where it crosses the x-axis. So it crosses here at negative 5, 0. It crosses at negative 2, 0. It crosses at 3, 0. And it crosses at 6, 0. It has four x-intercepts. Okay, so I just write each of those down. The point negative 5, 0. The point negative 2, 0. The point 3, 0. And finally, the point 6, 0. Next, we're asked to find f of negative 3. So when x is negative 3, what would be the y value? So you go to where x is negative 3 on your graph. There's negative 3. Go up to the graph at that point. There's our point. Okay. What is the point? It's the point negative 3, 3. So when x is negative 3, the y value is positive 3 for this function. So f of negative 3 would equal 3. Determine the number of solutions for which f of x equals negative 1. Now f of x, remember, is the same as saying y. Okay? So how many times do we have a point with y being equal to negative 1? Where well, here is where y equals negative 1. Okay? And it looks like this point here, there's one point. I'll put this in red, maybe, because we have so many colors on here. This point, y is negative 1, and this point, y is negative 1. So there are two places where f of x equals negative 1. And finally, we're asked to determine whether the function is odd, even, or neither. Again, this doesn't have any type of symmetry. There's no pattern being repeated in either direction, so this has neither. Whew. Now let's do the second half of the questions for this same function. Okay, now we're going to first identify all local minimums. So minimum points, again, are low points on the graph. Here's a low point. Now these appear to be, the ends appear to be low points, but remember, it can't be a local minimum unless 
there is another side to it, okay? There has to be points going on the left and on the right. And since those are the ends of our graphs, they can't be considered minim local minimums because there's not points to the left and right that are higher. So we only have one local minimum. It's this point here, which looks like it's the point 2, negative 3. Is our only local minimum. Okay. Next, they ask for local maximum. So we want to find high points on the graph, points where it peaks and then goes back down, our local maximum. Notice they have places to the left and to the right that are going downward, so they are local maximums. And now we just need to list the points. This one looks like it's at negative 3, 3. And our other point is at about 4, 2. So those are our two local maximum points. All right, what's up next? Identify intervals for which the function is increasing. I'm going to do this in green, okay? Increasing, remember, is any place the function is going upward or has a positive slope. So notice from negative 5 to negative 3, notice how the, the graph is going upward, and then it hits the slope and goes down, okay? So that's my first interval of increasing is from negative 5 to negative 3, where it's between x being negative 5 and x being negative 3. Well, we hit a low point, and then notice when x is 2, it starts going upward again, and it goes upward until we hit x is 4. So there's another interval of increase from 2 to 4. Okay? Remember, intervals of increasing and decreasing, we list the x values for which that happens. So between 2 and 4, not the point 2, 4 but from x being 2 to x being 4. Next, we're asked for intervals of decrease, and I'll do this in red. So that would be anywhere the graph has a negative slope or is going downward. And this section here definitely goes downward from negative 3, when x is negative 3, to when x is 2. So from negative 3 to 2, it's decreasing. Are there any other sections? Yeah, the very end here. Notice how the negative slope is going downward, and that's from when x is 4 to when x is 6. Okay, so those are our intervals of increase and decrease. Find the zeros of the function. I'll do this in blue. Zeros are any place it touches or crosses the x-axis, or any place y is zero. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4. Now remember we called these x-intercepts also. When it asks for the zeros, you only give the x value where y is zero. So we would just list the numbers negative 5, negative 2, 3, and 6. Those are our zeros. Finally, we're asked when. When is f of x greater than or equal to zero? So when is y greater than or equal to zero? That would be any time it's above the x-axis, because y is positive above the x-axis. So this first section here, f of x is greater than or equal to 0, and that occurs on the interval between x being negative 5 and x being negative 2. So from negative 5 to negative 2, that happens. Also, notice we come back above the x-axis from 3 to 6. So that would be our other interval, where it is greater than or equal to 0. And our last one is at less than or equal to zero. That would be any place below the x-axis. And it appears that that happens on this section here in yellow between negative 2 and 3. So the interval from negative 2, from x being negative 2 to x being positive 3, it is less than or equal to zero. Okay. So this kind of took you through the different things that might ask you about a function and kind of what they're talking about when they mention those things.